The lamp, the lamp is burning low upon my tabletop. The snow, the snow is softly falling. The air is still in the silence of my room. I hear, I hear your voice softly calling. Just to hold the hands I love on this winter's night with you. Hello and welcome to the series Turning of the Year Part 1. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my studio space here in the North Woods of Maine. I am looking forward to sharing with you four episodes this month which feature different festivities that my family and I participate in, as well as some techniques and crafts that I have discovered. I'll keep you up to date on my projects. For those that contribute financially through Patreon, deep heartfelt thank you. I am so encouraged and humbled. I'm looking forward to catching up. Wax wing, wax wing, what do you bring? From the frozen north Wax wing, wax wing We've been waiting on you I bring the amber that I have gathered On the northern seashore For the hatchlings I have fathered for thee I've been underground where wyverns are bound And where gold and jewels are bound These are hoarded under my very brown wings I will give to you all the things I One of the things I like to do at the beginning of the season is to decorate the home with some natural decor, gathered items, and I like to make a wreath. We have already cut our Christmas tree and I had anticipated using some of the boughs from the balsam that we cut, but as you saw, I came across these in the woods and I scooped them up. I added some cedar from our own front lawn into this arrangement as well as some filler that I had received in a bouquet at Thanksgiving. I added Pearly Everlasting and I just tied it all together with some green jute twine and finished off with some birch bark at the top as well as a air dry clay ornament that I made which I'm looking forward to sharing that process with you in a future turning of the year episode. <music> Thank you. 
the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are what makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of i wonder so i think i was a little overzealous uh, and perhaps a bit smug about thinking i could finish one quilt well i thought i could finish two quilts for christmas and frankly for this particular project this is only my second block i am working on the star pop quilt which is a quilt pattern by emily dennis quiltyloveshop.com and it features the ruby star society Firefly by Sarah Watts. At least that's what I'm choosing to use. And this is for my niece. It's not a complicated block. I think there are two sets of half square triangles per block. And then it's really just rectangles and squares pieced together. So once I get going, I am fairly speedy, if that's a word I could use to describe myself as a quilter, which I'm not really sure I can. But... <laughs> It's not a heavily complicated or pieced block. And there are two blocks. There's block A and block B. To date, I've completed two block A's of 28 and a zero block B's of 28. So I've completed two of 56 blocks. I'm sure you can see where this is going. I'm really enjoying these fabrics a lot. I love the magenta and the teal and the different motifs as I've highlighted before. And so I think it'll be really fun when it's finished and I think my niece is going to love it. There's also a baby quilt to be done, mind you, by February. And my nephew's fabric showed up, which I had hoped to have done for him for Christmas in this amazing fish fabric and fly fishing motif. I'll be doing the star pop again, and the stars will be in that turquoise. Wish me luck. This technique of mono printing has really captured my attention and I wanted to share it with you on this first edition of the turning of the year. I've made a series of cards to send out in celebration and so there are just a few pieces of materials that you're going to need to participate in this. And the first one is a nib pen. I purchased a Speedball 5 kit and it came with all these different nibs. It came with two pens, one which had the removable nibs and the other had a fixed, which was my preference. You also need to use a permanent ink and that's important because you're going to be coloring over these prints. And I had this Dr. P.H. Martens on hand and I'm using sepia, but you can also use acrylic inks and you can use these different colors as well, depending on your preference. The other kind of ob obscure material you're going to need is a transparency, and I'm using mixed media Canson paper. Um, watercolor wasn't really smooth enough um, in order to grab the lines off the transparency. I also garnered a number of images from the Biodiversity Heritage Library, so these are all royalty-free and 
they revolve around themes that are of interest to me, which is primarily flora and fauna and animals. And these grumpy owls are like everything. You're gonna need some painter's tape, baby wipes are helpful, paper towel, a flat surface to work on, and Windex, and the baby wipes as well will work to clean your transparency surface. So the really, the only thing to think about here is setting up your tracing. So you're gonna put your image down on the bottom layer. The non, uh, the low tack tape is really helpful because you're gonna be removing these things and trying not to tear off paper, reusing, etc. So like I said, I just was able to find painter's tape at home. So the image and then the transparency goes down. And I like to tape in two places to keep that very still. You're kind of creating a registration line here. Now, because I'm creating cards, I wanted to make sure that my image was on the left side, so when I folded it, that it would make a card. And so I am taping that over where I want the image. Anything that you're thinking about using that might involve text is going to be flipped and backwards. I'm not a spatial person, um, so you're gonna wanna think about that, but I am only using images today that don't have a right side, wrong side, left, right, etc. So you're gonna grab some of that ink in your pen and you're simply going to trace around the lines of the image. And this is going to give you an outline from which to work. You can include whatever lines you like, you can include shadow, but for me, this was a really great way to be able to work with images and eventually color that I wouldn't normally do because I don't really consider myself a sketcher or drawer. Now you can see I flipped my paper down and I rubbed it and it picked up the lines off of the transparency. And it has a very distinct look. Those lines are kind of smushed and um, faint in some, um, sometimes or um, splooshy where the ink kind of built up and it splashes out. So it's kind of what you get and you get to work with it. Talk about that decision making in art. But starting off with a simple illustration like this mushroom is a great way to kind of get to learn to know your pen, how much pressure you want to put down, etc. I clean off my nib on my pen and I clean off my transparency after each round as quickly as possible to kind of preserve those surfaces. The owls are a little bit more detailed and you can include as much detail as you want. It is really hard to capture the feeling of the transparency or this monoprint when you draw on the print itself with the pen. So it loses a little bit of that feeling. Um, the line quality looks different. So I will admit some of these can be really challenging when you're trying to do detail work around the eye. And you'll notice that this particular picture in the end, uh, he looks like he's been out all night and he's, well, he, he technically has, right? Oh, he looks very tired. <laughs> um, so it is fun to see what you end up with and then work with that image. Um, you can, like I said, you can add detail, etc. afterwards, but the line quality is going to be different. So here is my owl that I was able to do. He's looking a little snarky, but again, these grumpy owls on these kind of seasonal cards just make me really happy. The last image I wanted to share with you was primarily because you can see that I start working on it and then I clean it off and I start and I clean it off. And I really just wanted to bring home the point that once you pull your paper down, you're kind of locked into that image and what's happening or starting over again. So you're never going to be able to recreate or line it back up once you pull it, um, etc. So that's kind of important to keep in mind and um, consider as you work through your images. 
when you're done, this is kind of another, right? The, the fun continues. Um, you get to color it in, or of course you could leave it as it is. I've been fooling around a lot with watercolors these days. You could use markers or whatever creative process you enjoy or can think of. Um, obviously, watercolor is a new medium for me. I'm not very adept at mixing colors or kind of using it effectively as this owl kind of showcases, although I think he's quite funny in the end with his very bug-eyed look. Um, and as I had mentioned earlier, using a water-based medium on these permanent inks um, goes hand in hand because it preserves the lines. Some of the finishing I like to do, if you've been following me for a while, you'll already know, is I like to kind of age the edges a little bit. So I take the end opportunity to do any embellishments and I'm using just ink uh, from stamp pads to kind of age up and bring the eye into the focal point of the image itself. And then I have these fun festive stamps from Peg Stamps and I just wanted to add a little whimsy and festivity to these. So again, a little stamping um, to kind of frame the image and add a little bit more pop. But really the world is your oyster when it comes to embellishment and mediums and whatever you wanna bring to the table uh, and enhance your monoprint. I hope that you get a chance to try something new, creative, and fun this season. I know that sometimes it can be really motivating this time of year to want to do handmade gifts and just exchanges and secret treasures to people. I love this idea of creating and kind of using these old images, um, keeping them in our periphery and um, keeping these old illustrations out and about. I'm so glad that you could join me on this first series of the turning of the year. If you are a patron and contribute financially, a deep heartfelt thank you. I will see you next week. I think it's going to be cookie day. All the best till then. Many blessings and fond wishes. Bye.